Good evening, uh, YouTube. Uh, hold on, let me adjust this. Hi, Gene Zero here, back with another quick movie review. Um, this one is uh, one of my favorites and hopefully generate a lot of views on this video in particular because of what it is. But uh, since I did Batman Begins, this one is the sequel to Nolan's trilogy, which is uh, The Dark Knight. Um, returning cast uh, or and crew, um, of course, starting out with a little bit of the behind the scenes is Hans Zimmer, uh, Christopher Nolan, Jonathan Nolan, David S. Goyer. You know, that's the the music composer, the writer, and the same director. Uh, and um, returning cast is, of course, Christian Bell, Michael Caine, Gary Oldman, Chillian Murphy, even though he has a small role, Morgan Freeman. And the newer cast, which is Maggie Gyllenhaal, even though she's playing even one of the same characters from the first movie, they just recasted the actress. Previously was Katie Holmes. I still can't understand that one. Um, and the funny thing, of course, with Katie Holmes, this is Batman Begins is one of her one of my favorite roles with her in there. You know, I haven't seen her, or I think I did see her in Dawson's Creek, but I wasn't a huge fan of that show that much. You know, whenever it came on, I was I got bored and curious and watched it and she was all right in those scenes. Um, uh, who was in this? Of course, the late, great Heath Ledger. Um, and uh, I think I'm leaving somebody else out. Michael Jai White, Eric Roberts. Uh, and that's the only ones I can really think of. Um, I know I'm leaving somebody out. Probably remember who they are when I start going into review. But this is the second part of the of the, the trilogy um, in the story, of course, in Gotham. Batman has officially, you know, been the symbol that he was trying to be in Batman Begins. And there's even an anime short, I think, in between the first two movies. And I think it really felt more the gap of him doing actual work. Or not even actual, but more work solidifying the symbol, you know, of him being in Gotham. And really shaking the fear in, inside of criminals. Oh, I know who I forgot. Aaron Eckhart is Harvey Dent. Yeah, another favorite actor of mine. Um, it was this movie and, and the movie Paycheck, and I think another film I liked him in. But going back to the topic uh, at hand, so anyway, it's uh it's telling the story really of the ramifications of, or the major to me the major consequence of him being being a vigilante of him having the ultimate challenge of really coming across a guy who really doesn't give a shit about money let alone, you know, the world. And even Michael Caine has said it best. And we even live with people like this. Um, it's just that their screws haven't been un unscrewed yet. Is that some men in this world aren't looking for, you know, anything illogical like money or, or revenge or, you know, a certain, you know, um, law to be passed civilly. They just want to watch the world burn. And with the Joker, uh, character who, who's to me this was really his movie um you know I believe you know Batman was more the co-host and uh pretty much uh to me it was a little bit of a motivation it, that is if you knew who the Joker was now anybody who wasn't familiar with the Batman lore if they saw this they will take that to face value but that was a really good thing about this film and a lot of good movies that really take time to, to really break down the psychological view of characters and make them, you know, not just characters, but you really see their point of view. Like some of your best friends could be any one of these people because they're real, you know, despite of it being comic book lore or whatever. It's just the fact that all it takes is one bad day for you to snap. And especially again, I'm recording this right. This is the weekend right after the riots, <laughs> you know. A lot of people had a lot of bad days and most of them was dealing with the police, but I'm not going to go into that, you know, rant because I kind of did it with the, well, not really a rant, but the whole vent kind of did that with the last video um, where Batman Begins. But like I said, stated in the last video, um, all three movies in the Nolan trilogy had some kind of theme and this one was on chaos. And, you know, to me, it was more constructed chaos because... I really believe in, in many moments the Joker contradicted himself, just like how he gives out the whole multiple backstories of, you know, how he got the scars on his face and his past, which also comes from the comic books because he literally said nine times out of ten, 
you know, you could say he makes it up, but who, but for all we know, he could be traumatized from whatever happened to him. And that's why he said he'd rather have it be multiple choice, you know, because who knows, may have everything that he said did happen to him. It's just that it's a different chain of events, you know, but, um, dealing with the psychological aspect of his character, it really represents, you know, the, um, the anarchist who, who really sees the bullshit through certain rules, just like what he told Batman in the inter interrogation, you know, you're not one of the cops, so stop talking like one of them, you, you know, you're just like me, another freak, yeah, then that's how they see you, and eventually, you know, that's the difference between you and them, they can cast you out as soon as you screw up, yeah, and as he told them, you didn't disappoint, you know, you let six people die, and that's why we're having this conversation right now, in the jail cell, which I also indirectly planned. But um, another cool nature about um, what Heath Ledger did with the character behind the scenes, he, um, he, I heard he did a few psychological studies and uh, he looked at the character from um, Clockwork Orange, uh, Alex, who shared a lot of the, the same things. Except, of course, Alex and the Joker are, are really two different characters. They just, again, the situations just, you know, approach differently. And, um, like I said, if you saw my, my review on A Clockwork Orange, or even you see the movie itself, you know, the criminal mind most of the time cannot be cured. You know, to me, in my opinion, it really depends on what they did, you know, and how long they had did it, you know, uh, give you a good example. Um, and this is what I noticed most of the time in, in, in our law system and even morality, uh, of today, uh, we forgive people who have killed other people quicker than we do a child molester. And don't get me wrong, you know, in my personal opinions, child molesters are the, are the scumbags of the earth because you, you, you know, indirectly to me, it is a form of, of murder because you, you killed a child's innocence and now they have to, you know, deal with the bad result of them going into, into adulthood with that and and uh, the good thing, some of people, they do, you know, seek counseling and they get help for it, but some don't. And, you know, um, I can go deeper even uh, with the same thing and say if they're in, in the church, you know, someone who either molested or raped someone, violated someone just like that. You know, uh, same thing, you know, most religious folks, nine times out of ten, they, they turn a blind eye, you know, but... If somebody up in there is gay or if if someone is literally gutting, have a crusade after them, that they, they just don't like them, they would take that one crime they did and plaster it everywhere, which I really couldn't get. But, you know, the Bible did say time and place, even though you could take that, you know, with a grain of salt all you want to. But um, going back uh, with the movie, um, you know, uh just to put that out there, I was kind of a fan of Heath Ledger before this movie came out. I really liked his performance uh, in The Patriot when he played Mel Gibson's son. And I will admit, just like everybody else, when this movie came out, I think it was in 2007. Yeah, because that's when, um, of course, that's when Batman Begins came out in 2005. And that's when it was a whole reboot. And uh, superhero films, of course, were, were, I think it was right in the phase of getting to me, more and more realistic to what it is today. Um, of course, you can say like movies like Blade and X-Men were the starters, but this was another one that took it into an another level shift. Well, this one in Batman Begins, but I remember when, uh, hearing when this movie came out, I don't think I even saw the trailer. I think I saw the IMDb first, and I saw that Heath Ledger was playing the Joker, and, and, and I admit it, you know, I didn't believe in it either. You know, I, I had scoff and I couldn't remember if I saw anything on MySpace at the time of people just trashing it that quickly. But also you got to remember in, in 2008 and at that time we were living in a, it was a popular thing. It was, I, in my opinion, it was a starter of really trashing comic book films because it was the most popular and, and you know, funny thing to do because I think, uh, X-Men The Last Stand like came out two years before this and it really pissed off a lot of people with that film and um, you know uh, 
I might mention that movie again, but of course, when I do the X-Men review, and of course, when I review Mortal Kombat Annihilation, because it's one key factor that both of those films, both, well, it's two key problems that both of those films have, but back on topic, um, uh, yeah, even I had, had, you know, said some bad, well, I didn't say anything, but I have my doubts about Heath Ledger's performance, and the good thing is that I never really trashed it like that. And then I heard how, you know, I think um, the opening weekend, a lot of people were quoting his lines and saying the movie was very, very good because not only the Joker was already a popular character before this movie came out, it hyped up his his popularity even further. And, you know, uh, I think this was one of the first comic book movies. I, uh, I want to say it won an Oscar. I know it won a lot of awards because how realistic it had approached it in the first place. And of course... You know, I will say this with the Oscars, they have some messed up moments where, you know, um, they give Oscars a certain to certain movies, mainly by default, if somebody has died on it, depending on what it is, because, you know, somewhere in the alternate reality, Heath Ledger is still alive and he probably never won an award for this at all. But I bet you it's still critically acclaimed. You know, we can throw that possibility out there and and, and it sucks because. You know, um, right after this happened, him passing away, I think it was the first time I really said I'm not going to judge, you know, anything by its cover. And people are doing it now again with um, Robert Pattinson as Batman. Um, You know, they're already making fun of what the costume looks like. And it even sucks because I've seen Robert Pattinson in other movies. And uh, it was one in particular where the twist was about 9-11. But a lot of people don't like that film as well. But again, in my opinion, I see that that that's when I knew that he can play and and transition into doing something else than Twilight. So you know, in my opinion, you know, I don't think he'll make a good good Bruce Wayne, but he would definitely make a good Terry McGinnis. That one I I, I can definitely see him do. You know, and if he just cut his hair and shave up, if they want to do the the high school storyline, that can work too. You know, he he's, he doesn't look that old. You know, I still think he can pass off as a 17 or 18 year old or unless they want to change it to when he's in college. But uh, that wasn't the only movie. Um, there was some skepticism, of course, with uh, Joaquin Phoenix a little bit with his Joker. <sighs> oh, excuse me. It was some skepticism. But uh, the funny thing is that they didn't trash on it that hard because... Uh, what happened with Suicide Squad and uh, Suicide Squad? Wow, Suicide Squad and Jared Leto, and uh, mainly because of how they tried to hype up that movie so much, and not to mention the Joker was in it. And I believe indirectly that we're trying to capitalize a little bit on Heath Ledger, you know, Heath Ledger's performance, and not let you know Jared Leto and let it be its own thing. But that movie has so many problems anyway. But regardless. You know, Jared Leto had got a lot of hate, you know, um, I think mainly because of the weird shit that he did behind the scenes. And, um, you know, uh, the only movie I really seen Jared Leto in, ironically, because Christian Bale was in it, was, uh, what was that movie he did? American Psycho. But I haven't seen Jared Leto in anything else. Um, hopefully when, when Morbius comes out, depending on this whole COVID-19 quarantine if that's released in theaters, I'm, I will I will want to go see that. To be honest, I think it'll, it'll do a decent job because he does look like Michael Mobius. And I really hope that Blade intertwines with that. And just to see that character and rehearsal of him, you know, trade, you know, dialogue and, and interaction in the scene. That's what I really want to see. But um, other additional um, opinions uh, and, and discussions for this last bit I'm going to say for the movie um, because somebody had brought this up and it was very, very interesting. Uh, a lot of people give Heath a lot of praise in saying that he's one of the best Jokers of all time, you know, um, and there's different categories and debates. But of course, I give credit to the classics like Jack Nicholson and Cesar Romero and of course, Mark Hamill, who who has that mantle as well. But um, what one person has said, and he got to me really thinking about it, because um, ironically, Joaquin Phoenix's Joker kind of did this within the story of his movie. But um, somebody said that 
it was good and right for the era of when they came out and how the Joker was created. And um, some of my, you know, I heard different opinions. I remember a close friend of mine, um, well, acquaintance, he didn't like the Nolan films or the Joker ones in particular because, or, or at least this one, because um, it was too realistic. He wanted the more of the comic book gothic, you know, uh, style like the burden in, in, the, in the animated series kind of had. And that was just his opinion. You know, personally, I do like the more realistic tone because it really gets you thinking just because it's a comic book film. You know, Batman, again, was one of the most realist characters among the DC, you know, heroes, you know, uh, him and possibly Green Arrow. But, you know, his really hit his ground to earth. Like I said before, his greatest humanity, um, his greatest superpower is his humanity. Um, you know, he's not an alien from space. He's not a speedster. He's not a Amazonian mythological warrior. He he is a human being. He, he, he can bleed and die just like any one of us. You know, any one of us could be Batman. You know, like I said, right now, what's going on with Injustice you know, I wouldn't be shocked if we did have a, a vigilante in a certain city doing this because they care that much about crime and they see the injustice. But back to the point with uh, with Heath Ledger. But, yeah, someone was saying that um, I think it was at a comic book store a couple of years ago. And I remember the guy saying this and I, and I did agree with him because Jack Nicholson, he he did. I think he did. What was that movie before Batman? Um, the one who flew over the, the, the cuckoo's nest. And it showed in his character in that it was a, a mental um, mental institution patient, which is no different from the Joker anyway. So I, th I think that's how he probably got the role in Tim Burton's Batman. But um, in my opinion, it's really on the on the era, you know, that he was created. And you can even look at the comic books, um, you know, every single hero how they reboot it every couple of years i think they really do it to keep the characters more relevant to be honest they really should only do that every 10 years because things change throughout you know the whole decades you know of uh, of politics ideals and how people are so you know um you know people like i said praise you know uh Heath's performance and and I believe he was a, a good rising star be before this movie like I said his his charisma that I saw in um in uh, uh uh the Patriot and also Monsters Ball you know um it gave him a lot of range as an actor and it's just a shame because I really wanted to see him in more films you know to this day and also another um disclaimer uh this movie did not cause Heath Ledger's death. Um, you can even look it up here on YouTube. Uh, even Michael Jai White was saying, yeah, all the rumors and shit that was coming out about him being dark and weird and whatnot, that didn't really happen on set. He was a very cheerful person, you know, but that's how good of an actor he was. When, the cam when they said action, the camera started rolling, he immediately went into the Joker. And um, the real reason why I bring this up because Michael Jai White was saying behind the scenes, he was a happy go lucky dude. He he was showing pictures of his daughter, you know. I think he was he was talking about, you know, film with other people, you know, just actor stuff, going back and forth, you know, just average conversation you would have at work with someone, whether it be politics or, you know, basic stuff, just having a, a good time and then you you know, you, you gotta go to work when the camera says action. Um, you know, I but what I do believe is that uh what Jack Nicholson was saying, you know, how he had warned him a little bit. Um, but I don't think it was about the role of the Joker. I think it was more about his sleeping habits. And, um, you know, working like that in Hollywood, I, I'm assuming Jack had did it before and he was on drugs or something. And I think he was the one that, that had told him, yeah, you might want to see a psychologist or go see somebody, you know, to keep you in check from, from taking the shit because, yeah, it could be killing you. And, you know, that's what I'm speculating. You know, I'm um a lot of people, you know, at the time in the media and the press was was twisting what he said because, you know, he played the Joker too, and you know he didn't go that batshit crazy. Even though Nicholson's performance, you know, is 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 like I like what dude said. It, it was for the era and it was good, at least to me. And um, you know, this is the dude who did two movies where he played you know, a crazy person, which was the one who flew over the cuckoo's nest and Jack Torrance in The Shining. So, 
<laughs> you know, um, crazy all the way around. Um, but again, we can have the, the discussion in the comment box um, and I will talk to you guys later. Peace.